Hello and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. Let's look at the TAFA and chart analysis for January 8th, 2022. And what we have here is very interesting because we did have a further dump where I'm looking at the five day chart, by the ways. Um, we did actually have a further dump here. And even though the bottom was not actually any lower than this bottom here about a day ago, it did last longer. So that make me that makes me feel a little bit more uncomfortable. So I cannot say for certain that we bottomed because the low point lasted quite a bit longer. However, afterwards, we did have a decent rebound back up to about 42,000, which is actually about like the top, um, you know, like for today anyways. But that does not confirm that we bottomed or that we're actually uh, going up again. I think there's a couple of points on this graph that I'm actually looking for to more confirm or at least somewhat confirm perhaps a rebound sometime. Now, the first uh, the first point is the top of this, like, you know, we were talking about this head and shoulders thing here. Um, but the first point is actually up here um, at the top of this, like, formation, whether you want to call it double top or head and shoulders, whatever. Um, but the, the top of this formation is at around 42.7. And we haven't gotten to 42.7 yet. We only got to 42.3. Then we went back down. But now uh, there's a small green candle, and hopefully we can actually go back up. So if we can get to 42.7, that's the first signal. However, 42.7, 42.8 is not a very strong signal because we're still down in this um, – we're still we'd still be down in this kind of like lowest plateau area. The, the next major signal would actually be around $43,500. And that's, or even $43,900. That would put us at the top of the former plateau before we dumped on the 7th. And that is the second of two major dumps that actually happened within the past week. So if we can get up to 43.7, that's a stronger signal uh, that we're actually reversing the trend, whenever that is. The final point would actually be up here at $47,500. $47, and that's actually when we, before we started this major dump. So if we can get about $48,000 on a rebound, that could definitely signal a reversal trend, at least on the weekly graph. So that's actually what I'm looking at right now. Like 47, you know, 47, 48,000 right now. If we can, we can actually reach this plateau here, then we can say like, yes, we've hit a bottom here, but now we're stepping back up. Obviously, if we cross 52K, that's even better. I mean, on the one month and the, especially the three month, we're looking really, really negative. And realistically, I think we'd have to hit like, we'd honestly had to, we would actually have to hit like, you know, 52, 53K to reverse my opinion on the three months and actually say it kind of looks positive. And we'd have to go like probably into the mid 50s for me to say it's actually going positive on the three month. The six month graph still looks okay. It's not too bad, but honestly, if we reached like in the mid 50s, I could definitely say that we're probably bouncing positive once again. So like mid like mid 50 thousands would be that like the uh, optimal uh, level that we're actually looking for. But like 42,7, 43,000 would be the first point we're looking for. And then you'd be looking at like um, maybe like 48, 49,000 or like 47, 48,000 would be the next point you're actually looking for. So that's like those are the very, very important spots. You have like, you know, a 42,7 and then you have like 43,7. Uh, so 42,7, 43,7. Then you have about uh, 47,5 up here or 48,000 that you're actually looking at. Those are very, very important marks. And if we can get past that last mark, 47.5, which I know is a long time away, but keep in mind that these things can bounce very fast. If we can get above 47.5, I can say that like we have a strong possibility of trend re reversal. Technical analysis wise, like um, a lot of the oscillators are actually saying buy at this point because we're oversold on the commodity channel, we're oversold on the stochastic, we're neutral on the relative strength, but it only takes like one or two more points on the relative RSI uh, to actually go back into oversold. So essentially like the oscillators are actually saying buy. The moving averages all say sell. And I don't think the tens really going to change unless we have like three or four more days of like either even or like three or four more days, then like a fifth day where we go like slightly or a little bit upward. So like the thing is if we bottom out at like 42,000 and then we go up to 43, 44,000 on like the fifth or sixth day, the exponential for the 10 will actually change. 
The 20 is going to be a little bit uh, tougher, but if the exponential for the 10 and the 20 change, that's the first signal. If the exponential for the 10 and 20 days change, that is actually the first signal that we actually might be uh, reversing. Also, the 200 EMA, um, that's a little bit further away. So the, the 10 and 20 change will actually be the first signals that we could actually be reversing. And then the 200 will probably come next. So on the weekly, um, the oscillators are actually saying, uh, I, to me, they're saying buy. They're not really saying sell. Um, if you look at the commodity channel index, the average directional index is uh, not relevant right now because it's very, very weak. Uh, the commodity channel index at negative 118 is actually oversold. The stochastic is pretty close to oversold, but it's neutral, and the RSI is actually neutral. So to me, like this is actually more of a buy than a sell. On the EMAs and the SMAs, um, it's going to stay, it's actually going to stay sell for quite a while, and you have to move down to the 100 week EMAs uh, to actually look at a buy signal. Now, the thing is, like, we would actually need a big swing up to actually move, make the exponential on the 10 and the 20 actually like uh, positive. We would need like a 10,000 swing up. And I don't think, I don't really see that happening uh, very, very soon. Remember, today we didn't move that much down, but, day, but, but today, today is a weekend. And because it's actually a weekend, there just might not be as much action as normal. So we have to think of it that way. We have to see what happens Monday. If we have a big swing up Monday, that could be the first signal that we're actually reversing course. And remember, 42.7, 43.7, and then like 47.5 or 48 would be like the three levels you're actually looking for. Uh, we need to start climbing up that graph. And then of course, like that, those are kind of the levels where you would actually see the daily uh, on the 10 and 20 start to go positive, especially that third level. Um, the weekly right now, I think like, it's telling me like from here until the end of the month, it's probably a sell market. Next month, we'll actually reevaluate. On the one month, um, the oscillators are pretty neutral. They're not oversold or overbought. Uh, but the only moving average I look at is the 10 month moving average. If we fall below the 20, then we're in really, really big trouble. But we're still like a couple thousand above the 20. Um, but if we fall below the 20 or even the 30, we're in really, really big trouble. That could signal a multi-year bear market. But then again, if we move up like, you know, three or 4,000 and go above the 10, that could signal a big reversal, uh, especially like I'm hoping that actually happens towards the end of this month. So that would signal a fairly strong next month. So that's what we I have for you today. Uh, as for the fundamentals, there's nothing new, no, no announcements on New Year's Day. Um, we're waiting to see what the Fed does with the interest rates, but people need to remember, even though they said they're raising interest rates, it's a maximum of 2.5% over three years. And yes, the interest rates have been low for the last decade, but that's because they've been artificially kept low by administrations to pump up the economy to score political points, not necessarily what's best for the economy. They've been kept low to score political points as much as possible by both sides, um, especially in the last administration. But the thing is, like, we're finally starting to let them go up. And long-term wise, we do need to actually let them go up. We can't keep them low forever because we keep interest rates low forever. Uh, then you're just going to drive lots of inflation like we're doing now. To curb inflation, you need to raise interest rates. And historically, our interest rate should be at 5 6%, not down at 0%. And the highest we've actually let them rise um, over like the, the last part of Obama's term and the first part of Trump's term was around 2.5%. And then it went down again because of COVID. And now like we're kind of getting out of COVID, we need to let them rise again, hopefully slowly to about 2.5%. And maybe the economy will still be good then. And then we can let them rise to around 5% to curb our inflation because that's what it kind of needs to be. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe and hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.